Okay, so here is another camera repair tip from someone who uh, knows nothing about camera repair. Um, I was having an issue with my F100 for the last year or so, where the hot shoe right here was really wobbly. So anytime I would put a flash on, um, anytime I'd put a flash on, it'd shake a bunch. And uh, that's not good, because it made me think that uh, the flash hot shoe was gonna break. Um, similar prism issues that I was having um, were found in the metering switch right here. So when I would, it would I, I'm using a G lens, so it would always default to matrix metering. Um, but when I would switch to spot or uh, center weighted, it would not switch. Um, and so that mixed with a AF knob issue that I'm having, which is uh, parts parts based, um, <laughs> made me want to write this camera off. But I decided uh, that recently, uh, since LearnCameraRepair.com posted a repair manual online, uh, I would give it a shot myself. Um, and it's very easy. I will apologize. Um, I'm not going to go in complete depth here because I don't want to take my camera apart again, but I'll run you through everything. So um, in order to start working on this bad boy, you're gonna to want to take the back off. Uh, and you're gonna to want to be careful with these backs because these pins break frequently on these cameras. Um, so I want to get rid of these two screws here and once you get rid of these two screws, there's gonna be this plastic plate that you're gonna to wanna to remove. Um, and then once you remove that plate, that holds down this part of the rubber fronting. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm not taking it off in this video is because the adhesive is like 20 years old now and I don't wanna to have to buy new adhesive. So be careful once you take it off because you don't wanna take it off and put it back on, take it off and put it back on or else it won't stick very much. So you wanna get these two screws, remove this bracket, um, and then these two screws here, and then using, don't use, if you have nothing else, use a flathead screwdriver, but don't use a flathead screwdriver because the plat, the metal will uh, damage. You can see this plastic right here. Um, I used a metal flathead screwdriver. So try and use something thin and hard and plastic. You'll be able to break through there. Um, it goes without saying, take the battery pack out before you do any of this stuff. Um, and then there's gonna be one screw right here, which is a grounding screw. I'm assuming I know nothing about electronics. Um, <laughs> there's one big screw here. Once you peel off this front cover, which is just adhesive, you just have to peel it off. Um, uh, there's another screw right here. And then a screw right up in here that goes down or up this way. So it's one, two, three, four, five six, seven, remove this plate. There's a screw under there, eight. There's the ninth one here, 10th one up here. You don't have to peel this off completely. You can only, you really only have to stick something in here, peel it back a little bit, unscrew this one. And then I've already lost count, <laughs> but your last two screws are gonna be right here and right here. So, you can also check the repair manual um, for more in-depth in screw placements and stuff. But again, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So 12 in total. Um, and then once you have that done, you can get something thin and plastic like this repair tool guitar pick thing. Start pulling up from this side. Once you start pulling up from this side, you can start pulling the, the top plate off. But um, there's a flat, flexible cable under here that you don't wanna break. Um, you can peel, you can take the top off a little bit, like this way, and then push it that way a little bit. And then you'll see in the repair manual, there are two screws here with a metal plate under them and then two rubber insulator washers. Um, Try and keep those together. It makes it easier putting it back in. Um, and then now I will cut to a thing of what it looks like from the top. Okay, so this is the top plate off. These are those two screws I was talking about earlier. Um, 
in order to get to the flash part of the camera or the hot shoe uh, to tighten the bracket, you're going to want to desolder these five points uh, right here. So one, two, three, four, five. Get rid of the solder there, and then once you do that, you can peel back this uh, part of the board. There's four screws underneath. Uh, you're going to want to tighten those. Um, if you want to, you can use screw cement, which I believe is called Loctite. Um, I don't have any around, so I didn't use it, um, and we'll see how long that lasts. But if you really want to do this right, uh, use some screw cement. And then over here is where the metering knob is. And it was what I thought it was, which was a brush plate, which is these brushes and then a contact plate underneath here. You'll see the same thing here, that this is a brush plate and then there. Um, so here, in order to get to this section, when you open up the camera, you'll realize that you can't just get to this section. In order to get to this section, this cable right here, which is tucked under this plate, this cable actually comes out on top and goes into this little bracket. So in order to get the cable out, you have to unlock this bracket, which is this little brown lever. Uh, you can use a tweezers to unlock that bracket and then take out this cable. And once you take out that cable, um, you'll peel it back just a little bit and you'll find one screw here that you need to take off and one screw down here that you need to take off. Once you take off these screws, you can peel, once this is already peeled back, um, you could peel this board back a little bit and then underneath there, you'll find this little clear piece, which is where the brushes are. Um, I clean the brushes with rubbing alcohol and I actually uh, peel them back just a teeny bit so that they would make better contact with the contact plate that's underneath here, which I also cleaned with rubbing alcohol because it looked like there was some grease on it. Um, so once you clean the plate and the brushes, um, make sure you align the plate back in the same way that you found it so that it will work with the um, knob. And then once the knob's down, you can put the plate back in position, screw these back in, and then plug this cable back in. Um, remember, obviously, to solder these back in. Uh, but then it, uh, place the plate back, or the top, the whole top plate, back on the camera, screw these two pieces back in, and then I mentioned a grounding screw in the first part of the video. You know, I don't know if you need it. Um, it had metal contacts around it, which makes me assume it's a grounding screw. And if it's a grounding screw, you probably need it for electronics, but just throw that screw back on, which is the one right over here. Uh, put some batteries in, test the flash, test the, uh, the, metering, the metering knob, and see if everything works. If everything works, um, then make sure you screw everything back in. Before you start screwing everything in, make sure you check the alignment of the top plate with the body. I had an issue where the front of the prism where the Nikon logo is over here didn't align very well with the front of the body. So just make sure everything is aligned in well, and then you can put your screws in. And once you put your screws in, you can put your front plate back in. Don't forget this, don't forget this, uh, don't forget these screws. Um, yeah, uh, best of luck. I will say, uh, as I've been saying this whole video, I'm not the most experienced camera repair guy. I'm just doing these things because I uh, don't want to send out this camera for repair because repair is usually more expensive than another body. That's how film cameras work these days, uh, at least most film cameras. Um, so I thought I would try it at home. If you're in the same boat as me and you would rather try a repair on your own than send it out or buy a new body, um, give it a shot because it worked for me, but if you're a professional or the camera has sentimental value, uh, don't try this at home. Uh, and also be careful because although there are no flash capacitors in this, uh, electronics are some spooky stuff when it comes to shocking yourself. Uh, so good luck and uh, thanks for watching.